Hello there YouTube, Quinters Gunworks here again. I just wanted to make this short, quick video. I've got this 1800s uh, side hammer shotgun, and this is a beautiful time uh, for a good example of negative engagement of a sear. Uh, I see all these triggered things out there on YouTube all the time, and this is how you lighten it and all this other stuff, and nobody really talks about it or gives a good example of it. And the only thing you really see most of the time is uh, drawings on a chalkboard of, you know, this is this, this is that, this is the other. So what I'm going to show you right here is your sear engagement to your hammer. Right now it's just in the, the stop forward notch. And this is the trigger lever that, that the trigger actually pushes up on to move that. So sorry about the shaky video using my little iPhone here just for this quickie. So when the hammer comes back, there's our notch and our sear falls in. Okay. See it walk down the face? And I'm going to set this down for just a minute and see if I can get a little bit closer up on this thing. Grab a pick real quick. And not block the light. You can see right here the sear angle on our hammer itself. Okay. And you can see how that is positive. And just through where the edge of this has become quite worn out, quite rounded over, and quite negative. So when you squeeze this together, and you see my thumb off of it, see how it rocks up there, and it seems to sit kind of nice. And then as you let the weight of the trigger go on it, see how it wants to go back. If this was at the positive angle that it needs to be, that would always want to be pushed up into this crack. Okay? So it would always want to re-engage when I let go of this hammer. And that's the thing I really want to point out. Because a lot of the videos you see, it's, we're just going to polish our sear. We're not going to change the angles and all that. You polish with a buffing wheel and polishing compound. When you break out the 1200 grit sandpaper and try and keep the same angle on everything, you go from positive to semi-neutral. Now this one is, I mean, it's horrible. It's terribly worn out, but again, it's pushing a hundred and some years old, okay? But my main point here is when you get done your home trigger job and your sear engages like that and it's neutral, not quite negative. You've lost some of your positive and it's neutral. So you're out there in the woods getting ready to shoot your deer with your three pound trigger and you got your finger on the trigger and you're following him and as the weight of your finger hits that trigger it starts walking down like that okay and the more you push the more it walks down before it releases and if you let this one sit it'll actually fire by itself after about 15 minutes my point is when you let go of the trigger again if it's neutral, it doesn't re-engage all the way up into the sear like that. It stays creep down wherever you let go of it, okay? And if you got a gun that actually has, and most of them are, you flip your safety on, you think everything's good. Most safeties block the trigger. They do not block the sear. So you now have a loaded gun that's quote-unquote half-cocked, okay? Your sear engagement is half of what it should be. And as soon as you tap the gun, it goes. Now, I shouldn't be able to just squeeze that with my finger and do that. It should have a whole lot more. And this is not a fireable gun in any way, shape, or form. I'm just getting the sears to work because it increases the value of the gun if both the hammers actually come back and cock and work off the triggers. Okay? But I just, I had this in my hand, I was looking at it, and I'm like, this is a good opportunity, and these are one of the most basic triggers you could ever get, I mean, back in the 1800s. So this was a really, really good, good opportunity for me to give you, a, not a drawing on a whiteboard, but how sear engagement, and when you let go of the trigger, that sear should walk right back up tight against there. It shouldn't stay down there like that, all right? The other way you can check that when you pull the trigger is if it walks up that little ramp, your hammer is actually gonna come backwards just a little bit before it lets go. And if you watch this one, if I can get it, 
If I can squeeze it that light, you'll watch that hammer walk forward. See, see it walk forward, and then it'll go. So, if you want to test your trigger, the easiest thing to do, cock it, put your thumb on the trigger, pull the trigger really slow, and you better feel that trigger come back into your thumb. Now, geometry and all that, there are triggers out there that the sear engagement is neutral. That's the way it's designed, that's the way it's made to be, and it doesn't work right if it's not that way. But 99% of your guns have a positive sear engagement to the handle. All right, so I just wanted to put that out there and give a hands-on visual up, a visual thing. So if you don't know what you're doing, don't mess with your sear engagement. Don't polish it with sandpaper. Take care.